I've always tried to make the most out of what I've had. And even when things were tough, I always found a way to put food on the table. Even if that meant selling more than just a warm bed in my inn. I never thought of prostitution as something that I chose. This was just something I had to do to provide for those I cared about. And I see the way the other women look at me. They have looked at me like that my entire life. There's no place for a woman like me among the righteous and the influential. I live on the edge of society, literally. My house is built into the outermost wall of the city, Jericho's red light district. I guess we'll be the first to go if we ever get attacked. For so long, I waited for something to change, for somebody to see me as valuable, not just another body for hire. And I had almost given up hope until one day opportunity literally came knocking on my door. You see, the only people who came to see me were the faceless and the nameless, and these two men on my doorstep, they were no different. They hung their head real low, and it was obvious that they didn't want to draw attention to themselves. And I could see why. They were Israelites. You see, a huge Israelite army had just set up camp across the Jordan River a few days ago, and all of Jericho was talking about them. We had heard about their God, Yahweh, who rained down fire from heaven. Jericho shook with fear at that unstoppable army right outside our borders. And I had two of their spies right on my doorstep looking for a place to hide. None of our gods or idols had ever done anything for me. But maybe their Yahweh could. So I stepped aside and I let him in. Anybody could have seen me talking with these two guys, let alone let him in my house. If I was caught with Israelite spies, that would be it for me. But if Yahweh really could make a path of dry land in the middle of the Red Sea, then maybe he could make a way for me. So I shut the door real quick and I, I peered out the window and there was already a woman talking with one of the guards, pointing at my house. I had to move fast. I, I rushed him through the house and up onto the roof, but there was no place to hide. So I just had him lay down and I covered him with flax. And no sooner did they disappear underneath those bushels than did I hear a knock at my door below. So I ran down there, <laughs> shaking half with excitement, half with fear. And I took a breath to steady myself and I opened the door. It was the king of Jericho's personal guard. He must have been more scared than I thought. What can I do for you boys? But they were all business. Bring out the two men who came into your house for they are foreign spies. They knew. There was no turning back now. I had to lie to the most powerful man in the city. Lucky for me, that's something I was actually pretty good at. So I looked him straight in the eye. I said, yes, I think I know the men you're talking about, but I didn't know they were strangers, let alone spies. <laughs> they weren't buying it. I had to get creative. I said, yeah, okay, they were here, but they left already. They escaped through the main gate before it closed and I didn't see which way they went. And if you hurry, you might be able to catch them. And to my surprise, they spun around and ran towards the main gate. <laughs> It was the first time in my life that I had lied and felt like I was doing the right thing. They had bought my answers. And now it was time for me to get some answers from those Israelites. You see, Israel had a huge army less than 10 miles away and they were already sending in spies. That could only mean one thing. Jericho's walls would fall just like every other city that stood before them. Jericho's walls wouldn't keep out Yahweh. And everybody else may have been content to cling to their idols and their gods, but I saw something real in Yahweh. He wasn't just made out of stone or carved out of wood. He was the one true living God that had saved Israel over and over again. And now I wanted him to save me. 
And it couldn't hurt that I had two of his men up on my roof who owed me one. So I went up there. And they came out as they heard me approaching. And then we just sat there, looking over the city, watching the sun sink deep and red into the horizon. And then I kind of just blurted out everything I'd been thinking. I know the Lord has given you this land. There is a fear in Jericho like I have never seen before. Even the king is on edge. We heard about your God and how he made a path of dry land in the middle of the Red Sea and how he completely destroyed the Amorite kings to the east. Your God is the God. He's God of heaven above and earth below. <laughs> and they looked pretty surprised that I knew so much about their God. As I spoke, I felt something that I hadn't felt in so long. I felt this, this hope well inside my chest and, and tears flooded my eyes, my heart that had been hardened by so much anger and resentment and loneliness began to soften. For so long, I was just trying to get by, doing whatever I could, never asking for help. And here I was pleading with these two strangers. Please show me and my family kindness because I have shown you kindness. I was desperate. I had to be sure. Swear to me by your God. There was my ridiculous request. These were Israelites and I was a Canaanite woman and a prostitute. I had to have been the last person that Yahweh wanted to save. So I held my breath and I waited for their answer. Our lives for yours. That's it? Just like that I was saved and all I had to do was believe in their God? And then all I remember thinking is thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, that actually had to have been my first prayer. Thank you, Yahweh, for saving me. And then they gave me this red ribbon. They said to tie it to my window the day of the battle and that it would keep me and my family safe. This ribbon represents the most important gift I ever received. It represents hope. Who would have thought it would come from the God of my enemies? <laughs> so I lowered him out of my window in the wall. And over the next few days, Jericho's walls were shut tight. No one could come in or out. Lookouts were posted everywhere and the soldiers were preparing for battle. Yahweh's army came marching in with not just soldiers, but with priests and with trumpets. And they marched around our city for six days, blowing those trumpets like they had already won. Not a sword was unsheathed, not an arrow was fired. Just marching and trumpets. And then on the seventh day, they marched around our city seven times, followed by a loud trumpet blast and shouting and Yahweh answered their shouts and Jericho's walls fell. But not my part of the wall. We were saved. The spies came in and walked me and my family through the rubble of the city and out into our new home with Yahweh and the Israelites. I used to think that all I could do was make the most out of what I had. But God wanted to make something more out of me. I put my trust in Yahweh and He saved me. And who knows, maybe He can use my small part of the story to save someone else. <laughs>